Mark Rogers, TV on the Associated Press uh, Top 25 as we enter week two of college football. Every year I am a bit amused, sometimes frustrated, depending on my mood, when I hear voters talk about how they voted for their preseason Top 25. So some voters simply look at last year and make a projection based on losses and gains of personnel to determine what should be the top 25 for next season. So Florida State, unless they lost a ton, they won the national championship, they should be number one. Some would say Florida State won the national championship last year. They should be number one regardless, even if they lost 22 starters. I get both viewpoints. Next point would be, uh, I am amused at times when, when voters talk about how they approach the preseason top 25 because some voters simply Vote 1 through 25. These, I believe, are the 25 best teams in the country ranked in order, meaning the best team in the country is number 1, number 2, number 3, and so on, meaning number 7 is always better than number 10. Number 10 is better than 15. Some look at the schedule, and they're making a projection. They're looking at the schedule and thinking, okay, well, this team, I believe, is the fifth best team in the country, but they have a tough, tough schedule. They're never going to be able to finish fifth in the country, so I'm going to rank them 14th. That, I think, is a ridiculous way to look at it, but that is the way many, if not most, voters approach the preseason top 25, and that carries so much weight going into the season. So let's check out the current AP top 25 after one game and see how ludicrous some of these votes are. So Florida State's number one. What is that based on? Is that based on last season? Well, of course it is. That's the only reason they're preseason number one is because of what they did last year. It has nothing to do with what they did this year. If we are basing this top 25 in week two based on one week performance, then Georgia and Texas A&M should be fighting out for the number one spot. They were the most impressive team. So who were the most impressive weeks uh, teams in week one? Georgia defeating Clemson 45-21, Texas A&M going to South Carolina and whooping up on the Gamecocks 52-24 off the top of my head. Those are the two most impressive teams that I saw last weekend based on the opponents they faced, where they played them, and again, the the dominance of the performances. Texas A&M and Georgia, also LSU defeating a very sound, what we expect to be, of course we don't know at this point, but we ex- what we expect to be a very strong Wisconsin team typically in the top 15. LSU came back and won. They weren't dominant, but they uh, put on the throttle in the fourth quarter and won that game. Those would be, off the top of my head here, Notre Dame against a weak Rice team, so we're not going to count that. So against quality, quality opponents, best three performances, Texas A&M, Georgia, and LSU. Penn State beat Central Florida, neutral site. Central Florida coming off a Fiesta Bowl win and a 12-1 season. Sure, they lost the quarterback Bortles and lost Storm Johnson at running back, but they returned 10 starters on defense. Central Florida. Penn State, should they be ranked? Okay, let's start at the top here. Once again, it's Florida State. So, my point on Florida State is, either we should base this on the Week 1 performance, and Florida State was not the best team in the country last week, or... We'll take into consideration what they had last year. They were the best team, or they finished number one last season. They went undefeated, and then we project that to number one this season. Okay, in week one, Florida State defeated an unranked Oklahoma State team that is still unranked, and Florida State got by them by six points, neutral site, one possession game. So either Florida State needs to drop out of number one, or... Wow, if Oklahoma State played within six points of the best team in college football, they should be ranked. I don't care that they lost. We keep hearing about the eyeball test. Well, Oklahoma State passed and with flying colors. They played the best team in the country, supposedly the number one team in the country, lost 37-31. Oklahoma State should be ranked. Is that the only example? No. We go to number two, Alabama, based on last week's performance against a team West Virginia that went to 4-8 in 2013, 2-7 and seven in the Big 12. Alabama didn't look so dominant, did they? Giving up 365 passing yards, winning 33-23. So should Alabama be ranked number two based on this season's performance? No, not even close. 
Okay, the projection comes into play from last season and the talent we know on that roster. So Alabama's number two. Okay, if you're going to go with and you're going to defend Alabama being ranked number two, then West Virginia should be ranked based on performance. They should be ranked. Oregon at three didn't play anyone. Oklahoma at four didn't play anyone. Auburn at five beat Arkansas, did what they had to do. Georgia at six, of course, we talked about their performance against the Clemson Tigers, a team that we believe will be a top 15 to top 20 team. So Georgia was impressive. Michigan State didn't play anyone. Ohio State, here's another stupid uh, response by the voters. So Ohio State, preseason top five team, number five in the AP poll. Now, what the voters did here was they took it out on Ohio State that Braxton Miller was hurt because they couldn't do it in the preseason poll because Braxton Miller was healthy at the time that the preseason poll was taken. Braxton Miller then got hurt. Ohio State would have never been ranked number five had that news come out and Braxton Miller been hurt before the preseason poll was taken. So the pollsters were not taking it out on Ohio State that they defeated Navy by 17 points. And I'm not going to argue that that was an impressive performance. It was not. They trailed 7-6 to six at halftime. They trailed in the third quarter, 14-13, to 13, but Ohio State was fine. They, uh, they put on the throttle, much like LSU did, much like some other teams did, UCLA, uh, and didn't look impressive. But the pollsters clearly took it out on the Braxton Miller injury. So they did what they wanted to do but couldn't do in the preseason because they couldn't foresee the future and see that Braxton Miller got hurt. Should Ohio State pay the penalty dropping 5-8 to eight because Braxton Miller got hurt? No. That was the preseason poll. Ohio State, based on performance, should have maintained a number 5 poll position. Texas A&M at number 9. Okay, if, if you're going to take performance into account, strictly performance this season, Texas A&M should be much higher than number nine. They should be arguably the number one team in the country. Okay, Baylor at 10, UCLA at 11. UCLA pretty much suffering the same fate as Ohio State. Not impressive on the road against Virginia. Virginia team that might be much better than the 2-10 and 10 team that we saw last season. But UCLA wins based on three defensive touchdowns, 28 to 20 on the road. LSU defeated a quality, what we expect to be a quality Wisconsin team. They stay at 12. Stanford at 13, didn't play anyone. USC at 14, did not play anyone. Okay, Ole Miss, they rise from 18 to 15. Based on what? They defeated a Boise State team that's probably what they were last year, 8 and 5. Ole Miss was not impressive. Forget 35-13. They were sloppy. They were unimpressive. They really got outplayed from about late first quarter to late third quarter. For about two quarters of that game, they got completely outplayed by Boise State. If you watch the game, Ole Miss put down the throttle in the fourth quarter, won it, and they go up three spots. I kind of question that. Notre Dame at 16. Arizona State at 17. Okay, Wisconsin. Okay, this is where the voters make no sense. I understand a team loses, they drop. I understand that, but if we're ranking the teams based on performance, shouldn't the number 14 team lose to the number 13 team in a very close game? Yeah. Wasn't Wisconsin ranked number 14, LSU number 13? Didn't Wisconsin lead that game? Didn't they outgain LSU? And they lost in the fourth quarter. That pretty much played out the way it should have. LSU won a very close game against Wisconsin, 28-24. Wisconsin was ranked number 14, LSU number 13. Wisconsin dropped from 14 to 18. Why? Nebraska 19, Kansas State 20, North Carolina 21. They didn't play anyone. South Carolina's number 22. Why? I don't know. Because they were number nine last week. That's why they're number 22 this week. Not because of anything that they've done on the field. What they've done on the field is get crushed at home against the Texas A&M team that we thought was the 23rd best team in the country. So they basically flip-flop spots. South Carolina and Texas A&M. What kind of thinking is that? That's the thinking that their number nine will drop them about 12 or 13 spots. The thinking should be, how well did they play last week? Well, they got killed. At home, 
they're not a top 25 team right now. Is South Carolina a top 25 team? We'll see. Down the road, we'll see. They need to earn it. At this point, they have not earned a top 25 ranking. And they're ranked 22nd. Clemson, pretty much the same thing against Georgia, although they looked much better and were in the game for three quarters, roughly. Much better performance out of Clemson at Georgia than South Carolina at home against Texas A&M. Mizzou at 24, Louisville earned that 25th ranking, taking on Miami, winning at home in a pretty dominant fashion. Okay, I made the claim for Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and Penn State. Let's think outside the box. Rutgers did a lot more in week one than most of these teams. They went on the road, defeated a decent, what we expect to be a decent Washington State team, 41-38. Ditto Tennessee at home, defeated and blew out. So I would give the nod to Tennessee over Rutgers, even though the game was at Neyland Stadium. Tennessee dominating Chucky Keaton in Utah State, a team that has been a formidable uh, program on the fringe of the top 25 the past two years, Utah State. So we make our claim for a number of teams. We think outside the box and like these voters here. Would love to hear what you have to say about week two of the top 25 right here on Mark Rogers TV.